So he has to give that to the bank for collateral. But he still needs money for working capital. He has to pay his salaries to his employees every month. So if he's taking a loan from the bank for equipment and he's giving them collateral, he can only use the collateral once. So his ability to get working capital facilities it's from less. the bank is less. Okay. Second. So go to the leasing company. Uh -huh. Say to the leasing company, I want to buy this new piece of um, textile equipment. What collateral do you need? And the leasing company will assess the customer very quickly um, and say, that's enough collateral, but we want you to pay a down payment, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35%. It's a general procedure all around the world. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So this uh, businessman saves his uh, money for, for, say, current capital. Right. Uh, secondly, what is the second benefit? The second benefit? The second benefit would be the, the tax side of it as yep. well. Uh, how does it work? Well, it's exactly the same as a loan. That if it's a loan from the bank, then the borrower, the customer, owns the equipment. So any tax benefits, any depreciation, fiscal depreciation, any benefits whatsoever associated with the asset belong to the customer. Mm. With a lease, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. He receives all fiscal benefits. And a plus, with uh, whenever he pays this uh, uh, interest on lease equipment, it's also tax exempted. It's ex like a loan. Exactly, yeah. You're an expert now. Oh, okay. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, the, uh, any interest expense payable on a loan is a tax deductible expense. Any interest expense paid on a finance lease is a tax deductible expense. If he bought it equipment at once, it is not. It is cost and it is cost is taxed. I mean, the equipment Correct. capital investment is. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what if there's any other adventure, uh, advances? Well, he's going to use the asset over a period of time, isn't yes. he? And I, I try and use this analogy, which is um, you're employing a new finance director, mm. a new CFO for your business, mm. and you agree that you're going to give him an amount of money per year, and you sign a three-year contract. And the first day he's in the office working for you, he comes and he says, I'd like my three-year salary, please. And you say, no, I'll pay you each month. So after you've worked for me, I'll give you the money at the end of the month. So if you buy a truck and you're going to use that for the next three years, why pay for it all on day one? You're going to use it for the next three years at least, spread the cost of the ownership over the time that you're going to keep the truck. And uh, meanwhile, you are creating value with that track, right? Before right. when the payment is completed. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> now about IFC. Uh, IFC, I have seen helping a number of countries to establish a new industry. And one of them is leasing industry. Uh, please tell us, how does it work? Where it is? Uh, is it working well? It's a huge remit within um, IFC. The even of a part of the organization, which is a huge global organization, mm. as you know, part of the World Bank. And part of the organization is called A2F, which is the acronym for Access to Finance. And they are involved in several sectors, like microfinance, but one of their biggest ones is leasing, because they understand what I've just said, that it is a perfect form of finance. You want this asset? The asset is the collateral. In so other words, it. they give access to finance for those people who otherwise would have a problem to have that access to money. It's, it's the small, medium enterprises. Uh, which means, how do you qualify small, medium enterprises in IFC terms? I'm not going to speak for IFC. And the, the reason I'm not going to say that is that every organization that I work with has a different way to categorize an SME, mm -hmm. but it would be a company, I, I was about to come out with a number there, I was about to say with a turnover of less than five million dollars, but in a smaller country like Mongolia, whose economy is just building up, probably a company with a turnover of five million dollars is a big corporate here, if we forget the mines, it's probably a big corporate. Turnover. Yeah, with turnover. Yeah, yeah. general so sales revenue. I just think it's the, it's the company that's employing a few people that wants to grow. 
So a company that's employing maybe up to tens of people. So I, I tend to think of it that way rather than a turnover. Mm -hmm. It's the type of local industry. It's the type of company that is creating uh, products that will be sold here in Mongolia. It's the type of company that doesn't have a big balance sheet, that cannot go to the bank and demand a big loan. The type of company that doesn't have much collateral to give to the bank. But it's the type of company that generates wealth uh, for Mongolia. It generates, it creates employment. So IFC are focused on the small, medium enterprises. In uh, every country almost, up to, I mean, even the most developed country, the SME, whatever they qualify, classify, uh, plays uh, the almost two-third of the whole total entrepreneur, uh, enterprises are a small, medium enterprise in their own category. Indeed. Meaning that more middle class, more people are involved in that sector, and they, uh, they do the business. They create value, right? Indeed. Uh, customers' value, which otherwise not uh, supplied by a major large company. Indeed. I think if you use the analogy of a, of a big building, the, the visible part is like the corporates. Everybody recognizes them. We've got big global names. Those mm. are the big corporates. and We mm. can see them everywhere. But a big building is built on strong foundations. The part that the building stands on. That's, in my analogy, that's the SME. That's we don't see them. But if it wasn't for them, the building would fall over. That's what it's about in Mongolia as well. Unfortunately, we, we have um, companies that are also only existing in accounting. The reason to me is you can register an open company in this country, mm -hmm. but closing is almost impossible. <laughs> and I know many companies which does not exist, but they keep coming to tax authority showing zero balance mm. and that way is they say cheaper than to go through whole procedure of closing a company is it probably not only mongolia what do you think what is this i haven't heard this one before where it's expensive to close down a company i haven't i've i've heard the exact opposite like in moldova where companies just disappear and nobody cares uh, yeah, so well you can register a company and then just disappear. Yeah. Well, it's a small company. <laughs> this is does not. It's a small country, uh, relatively not that many uh, companies that have disappeared. So, um, uh, but this is the issue to address. Uh, and you know, when the company is not closed, when uh, it's de facto is not existing, mm. but it's in uh, statistics exists. This is uh, uh, to me. Uh, waste of a lot of resources, a lot of uh, uh, creative energy of that management who had by some reason to close or bankrupt yeah. the company. So the bankruptcy law in the country in Mongolia is not a problem. And I, haven't, I don't know if there is a company, I don't remember that who had officially announced bankrupted. Really? Yes. Oh goodness. So that's why I think, I think we artificially boomed the amount of a company. Perhaps. We, I think, are almost 70,000 companies in the country. It's way big. Well, as a leasing guy, I don't want to lease anything to a company that's worth zero. And me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, before we are coming to the end, before that, um, Stuart, um, what do you think about the... Uh, human resources and in the leasing industry. I mean, you have been doing several seminars meeting the Mongolians and I mean, of course there is a young industry, a lot of people just coming. What do you would particular advise to uh, people who, 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 will, or who are in the industry to know and to pay attention? Well, I'd like to answer that in several ways. If I was a young man, um, in this country, I would like to join the leasing sector because the, there's a lot of excitement in joining an industry that is going to develop and it will here in Mongolia. It will. Uh, it may take a little bit longer than I would hope, but it will. So joining a sector that is at the, the, uh, the baby stage, before it even gets to the infant stage, 
And being able to be part of that sector as it goes through adolescence and into grown up and to older age is wonderful to have been there at the start. So I would say to young, well educated people, men and women, leasing is 50-50. Uh, it's not male dominated. It's not women. It's not dominated by women either. Absolutely not. Uh, get into the leasing sector. Go and visit your local leasing company and see if they've got a job. It's exciting both from the sales perspective and from the administration operations side. And I would say to companies out there in Mongolia, find out more about finance leasing. Don't be frightened of it. It's a good product. Um, it's a product for growing your business. It's a safe product. And in Mongolia, we're fortunate that there are, as far as I can see, there are only honest leasing companies. The leasing companies appear to be part of good quality financial institutions which is good. I worked in countries, you mentioned Poland, when I went to Poland in 1997 there were 500 leasing companies wow. and when I left there three years later there were about 50. 50. So very fast murder. V well, and a lot of companies went bust. Disappeared. As well. uh -huh. yeah, which isn't good for the leasing sector. But in this country, in Mongolia, we've only got a few leasing companies. And I say give finance leasing an opportunity look at it as the next way to finance your asset acquisition. Try the bank by all means, because you understand the bank. But go and speak to the leasing company and see what they can do for you. Well, Stuart, you, are, you, you visit Mongolia several times. And your work in Mongolia had contributed a lot to the leasing industry towards the direction you have just described. And uh, one of the benefactors of your visit, your knowledge, uh, I think uh, companies here who have listened to you and who have been working with you, including Haas Leasing, are happy and uh, they will be doing their best, say, in five, six years from now on, you should visit again, see what, how much you were right. I don't want to wait five or six years. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I want to be back again. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much for visiting us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, GD. Ani tudo i khorn chun yu hijat khwegich asu hasam ta uru i khorn yu khon tudo yu hijat khwegich asu yan fejoyal.